Hey everybody, it's Aquila, and this is a Lefty Knitter Podcast, episode 199. That's crazy, I'm almost at 200, and I'm almost at 2,000 subscribers. I only need like 125. That would be really awesome if I could get to that. Even if I get to that in the next couple months, I'd be really excited. My hair is like really crazy. Okay, this is a podcast about knitting and fiber arts and whatever I'm getting myself into. So, my name's Aquila. Welcome everybody that's new or returning. I appreciate you. And normally I record through the week, but you know what? This week, it just didn't happen. We were busy. We had a lot going on. So I have a ring light over here. I apologize. I know that's going to be distracting. Um, I tried to do it so it wasn't distracting. That's a little better. Okay. Let's see. So this week was really busy. Just we're we're in Baltimore, husband, kids, cats, etc. Uh, really busy week. So uh, my littlest had uh, bingo at her school, and that was a late night. It was for raising money for the PTA. Monday and Wednesday we always have a activity, and then on Wednesday she also had to not had to, she promoted in karate. So now she is a purple belt. So that was exciting. So that was another late night. And so it's just been kind of, it's been kind of a lot and I haven't been able to really record. So let's start at the beginning of the week. Um, crafty wise, Tuesday was hobby enthusiast day at my work and I took my wheel in. I have been trying to get this loop bump spun and I just am not as dedicated like, I should really say 15 minutes a day, right? It's hard to, I'm, I'm really, it's really difficult for me to keep like a schedule that way. Although I have another thing that I've been doing that I have been doing every day and that has been really exciting. So, oh my God, my family is so loud and I'm sorry. This is why I'm hiding in the basement today because yeah, yeah. I hope the thumping and the jumping has stopped, but we'll see where that goes. Okay. Took my wheel to work and I don't have it down here. I have a shacked sidekick. I'll insert a picture here. I have been spinning a loop bump for a while and I'm trying to spin like pretty thin. So when I do a chain ply, the colors all stay together. I want it to be like a thin three ply. So I'm trying to spin as thin as possible. I know it's not the greatest and I'm just not really great at spinning. I've had my wheel for a long time and I just need to do it. I just need to do it more. And now I have, an, I have another wheel. <laughs> I have one person. I can't use all these tools at one time. It's very overwhelming to me. Like having so many tools and fun things to play with that I feel like I, I there's not enough time in the day. So th that's that. But I did my... My coworkers were all very fascinated and loved just watching. I felt really weird because I took my boots off and I had my, I had knitted socks on and I'm spinning in my socks because spinning with my shoes on feels really awkward. So, but they didn't care. They didn't care at all. So they thought it was just soothing to watch. And, um, they were like, we could sit here all day and, do, and just watch you do this. <laughs> so that was like, I got really like nervous though. And my hands are sweaty. So I wasn't spinning probably the greatest that I could. <laughs> Whatever. All right. So I, th I just have lots of random stuff here and I apologize for the randomness. Let's, let's start with something right here. I'm wearing it. I finally, finally, finally got my buttons put on. Um, I got my buttons from Flair and W and it's on Etsy. It will be linked. They will be linked down below. I sent them a picture of my sweater and my yarn and told them the size I needed and they custom made me some resin buttons. I showed them already previously, but they're glittery. I will insert video while I talk about my sweater. So this is the home card of it card again. I think it's by Kadri. Oh, my light went a little weird. Is that better? I don't know. It went dark or something. Okay. Video is playing. I told you guys how I had a, a total wreck with, um, blocking, not blocking part, but when I washed it, it bled so bad. So this is trendsetter yarns. This is the union. 
I told you guys uh, about this, but I'll reiterate everything one last time. The pattern and designer will be linked below. This is a 52% recycled merino, 48% recycled acrylic, and it is a 50 gram ball, 110 yards. I used nine full balls and 12 grams from the 10th ball. So I used 462 yards to make this. This is considered Aaron or worsted. I can't remember. And it called the sweater called for the same size. <sighs> I love it though. So, I mean, the video played, you guys saw like a full shot of it. Oh my God. Seriously. I know you guys can hear that. She is skateboarding upstairs in our hallway. That's what you're hearing. I used size. It called for a different size. I used an eight and a 10 to get the gauge, a US eight, five millimeter, US 10, six millimeter. I think it called for a 10 and a half but I got it with this and I am really happy with this except Luna's cat hair is white and it's all over this thing. It's just all over it. I can't help it. I can't, I, I don't, I mean, I could totally, it, it's going to be, a, it really is probably going to be a home cardigan more like I throw on here at home, not really wearing it out, but that's fine with me, but I'm very excited. I have a little bit left. I don't know what I'm going to do with it because I feel like I can't mix it with anything because it bled so bad. So maybe a baby hat and then I can wash the heck out of it. That'll probably, I'll probably do something like that because it'll be a single color. I'm thinking about doing baby hats and throwing them up on my Etsy shop because they're so quick. Like cute little, just plain hand knit baby hats. I don't know. Uh, another thing that I finished that I don't know if I even showed this. I could have a few episodes ago. I cranked it at one of the fiber art studio tour days and I never got to finish it but I made this pouch on my Erlbacher circular sock machine and it's got one of the closures like that that looks like the Muppet mouth and I love it and I think it's the cutest thing ever uh so yeah oh and did I mention I didn't record any clips so everything is going to be right here today so I finished this I don't know if I'm going to keep it or gift it or throw it in Etsy shop don't know but that's another thing. All right. Have you heard about uh, Kristen from We Share Needles? She's having a baby. Um, if you don't know, they had put a call out for squares for a baby blanket. And I think it's so cute to have like a community knitted baby blanket or crocheted. Um, I had put a call out to make John's pants when I made him the crochet granny square pants. And it was overwhelming and awesome. And I'm sure it's probably going to be overwhelming for them too. So, I mean, baby might have two blankets, but just saying. This is the Daisy and Bluebird. It's all on their page. I'll link them down below. Uh, it's Maddie and Kristen, We Share Needles podcast. And they called for two fingering weight held double, finish size five and a half square, and this pattern. And so I, this was the first one I did and I thought this was super cute. Look how cute that is. So I'm going to get these in the mail, hopefully, uh, today. I don't think they always get to watch my podcast, like, right away. Or if at all, I mean, who knows? I don't know. You know, sometimes people are busy, right? Um, so I'm going to try to get these in the mail, like, Monday. And then this is my second one, and I really love this one. I wish the light wasn't such a pain in the butt. Can you guys see that? I love this one so much. All right. This light is very bright and annoying. Maybe more natural. And it can't go down anymore, so we'll turn it a little bit away. I just need a little bit of light. <sighs> all right, so here's all my trendsetter labels. I can throw them away now. <laughs> I have a cranking order I have to do. It's a little bit different. I'll be showing that in the next episode because I, I just don't have time. I want to properly record the yarn um, and put that all together. I'm very excited about it though. It's one of the farms from the co-op and it's yarn from different farms from the co-op that I've talked about, Maryland Lamb Co-op. They do yarn, they do meats, they have eggs, they have everything. And um, if you don't know and you're local, they have a meat subscription box. You have to be able to pick up though. And then if you're not local, 
you can do a yarn subscription box, which I did that the last time they had it. I'm not doing it this time. I just don't have, I have so much yarn. I don't mean to be like, I have so much. I feel overwhelmed because of the amount of yarn that I have. Somebody else might not be, but I, with what I have going on, I just feel like I have a lot going on. So um, sneak peeky preview of some of that though is it's beautiful. And they now have yarns that are being dyed by Melissa from Rising Tide Fiber Company. So really you should check them out. That'll also be linked down below, but this is an order I got from Sarah and it's going to be a little different because I'm not actually doing it on my Earl Backer. I'm doing it on my Addy machine. So you guys will, the, there's, there's a preview of what's, what's to come in the hopefully next episode. The only other knitting thing, well, oh, one more thing, one more thing. So I try, I told you guys I had bought from my coworker friend, mom had passed away partner's mom had passed away. She had a ton of crafting stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm going to buy, I'm going to get some. She had a ton of these. They're the canvas, these canvas things. And I got this one thinking I could start off because they're super cute and small. I, I don't want to say the, the H word, the hate, 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 because it's not a nice word. I did not enjoy this. It did not bring me joy. I didn't like it. And um, I have one more that I had gotten and it's a bigger piece. And I really want to have that one where this one, I don't really want to have these. I thought these would be nice to learn. And maybe it'll bring me more joy if I actually was maybe better at it. I just didn't love it. Also, I should have known this. I don't love counted cross stitch either. I've tried that and I don't love it. Um, I have a piece that I started when Hayes was still in the womb <laughs> and I haven't finished it. And it's only like this big. I just, I don't enjoy it. I much prefer freehand embroidery stuff, freehand stuff. And so doing the counting and all that is, is not for me. And, and honestly, I really love like really like precise type things. So you would think that I might really love this, but that my brain doesn't love this, <laughs> but it does love puzzles, which are precise. It loves like diamond painting. I ha I've done that in the past. It loves, um, the color by number. Like, I love that. I don't love this. <laughs> So this is going to, I don't know what I'm doing with this. This is either just going to get gifted to somebody who might want to try it too, or taken to like um, a thrift or secondhand shop. I feel bad because I just didn't love it. And I'm not going to keep doing something that I don't, don't really absolutely love. So the other one, the other one I have, I really want to do. Oh, here goes everything falling, but I, I love her. I, so I, I will do her because I like this so much and because I want this finished project, this product. So I will do this one in time. Maybe my head wasn't in the right space. We have, um, just some emotional things that are, going on um a family pet not ours specifically in our household but um yeah and we've talked about the family pet stuff before because we talked about my cat Vaughn who is doing okay um uh yeah I, so um uh, yeah I don't need to cry so um family pet stuff is not easy and having to not having to make that decision is just really crappy. I'm, I, I'm glad that it's not me making this decision, but it's, it's not fair to all the people, um, that are in the household of this pet. <laughs> so muff, I'll just say it's muffin. And I don't know if I've talked about muffin before. It's my in-laws dog. They've had her forever. John helped train her. Like she's a great dog. And yeah. So all right, on to the next thing. I, I know this is probably going to be like a 20 minute or and that's really okay. So I've been working a lot 
on my blanket. Why I can't think of the name of it, but it'll be down below. And I'm using my Pretty Twisted Yards advent calendar. I just finished color 12. I'm at the 50% mark because it's Helen Stewart. Nope. Yes. Yes. Um, knit vent throw. It, it's the lace throw from this year. God. Now my brain's just really like, bleh. I finished color 11 and I'm going to start color 12. It's really difficult to show. Let's see if I can find the marker where I was. I think maybe I can. Yep. Okay. So the last time you guys saw this, I was here and I've done one, two, three, four days, four days. That's pretty cool. And so I'm ready to start the next one. That's going to be this one. They're so loud. Oh my God. And then all together, there's pink is the first color, this pink all the way down there. It's so cool. I love it. I love it so much. I am getting maybe a color one full one one of one day's worth done in about two to three days depending on if i'm not working on other things so yeah i i mean i love it a lot but i know Hayes has pretty much claimed it so it's fine it's fine i can just take it back whenever i want right i made it okay <laughs> let me shove that back in my bag here and then <sighs> so Hayes has had watercolor for a long time. You know, like cheapo, not cheap. I should I, I shouldn't say that. You use the tools you have, right? And for a kid, I wasn't going to buy really expensive tools. She has watercolor. She has two different Crayola sets and she has another set that's like a cheaper brand that came with like a whole sticker book, like a whole craft kit. Um and she has her drawing journals and her sketchbooks. And I also have a sketchbook. So I was like, well, let's buy a pad of watercolor paper. Well, that's not expensive. That's it's expensive. And I don't want to just give her a whole page. Like, yeah, she's got to like really know what she wants to be able to have the whole page of it or a piece of it. So we've been, um, working in our journals. Oh, what sparked this even more is I, I bought some the paper. I had bought really like better paintbrushes. They're not great, but they're better. And then we were at the uh, BMA, which is the Baltimore Museum of Art. So we went there last Sunday. It's a free museum here. And we got to see Omar Ba. Uh, if you don't know anything about Omar Ba, definitely go look that up. It, I didn't take, I took some pictures. I'll put some at the end. Um, along with, I think, uh, Hayes's, uh, karate promotion where she kicks, she got to kick a board this time, but we got to see some Georgia O'Keeffe. We got to see, uh, some Matisse there. They have a wide variety at the museum. They have ancient Europe, like ancient European, Egyptian. They have, um, some new age stuff. I wanted to see the John Waters collection. It's not his work per se, it's collected art that he's collected. Uh, and if you don't know who John Waters is, he's the director of, uh, Flam oh my God. Why am I totally blanking? He did Crybaby Flamingo. No, that's not right. Pink Flamingo. Oh my God. He's, he's pretty famous <laughs> and he's from here. Sorry. And the other one. Oh my God. That's really bad. You can look them up. So at the BMA roundabout, let's get back. The BMA has a ton of like stuff in their gift shop of all different things. And they have a huge kid section. And then they have a huge kid section that has, um, art tools. She got these 
watercolor crayons is what they're called. Watercolor crayons, I think is what they are. Yeah. So we looked up the brand we have is Uli, O-O-L-E-Y or O-O-L-Y. It's a decent brand. Um, you can get them on Amazon. We got them at the shop. But you can draw with them and then you just use paintbrushes with water to like mix the drawing and make it look like a watercolor. It's very interesting. Um, I'm sure there's better techniques than we're just doing, but the first one in my journal that I have, my sketchbook, I don't know what to call it, is using those. Um, so she got really into it. She was doing a bunch and I was like, I want to do some. And then I was like, but I want to do some with like watercolor too. So I busted out her Crayola and every day I've been waking up and on the days I don't have to be into work, on the days I'm home, I, I've done this. Not, I don't know how to fit it in on the days that I have to go into the office, but so I have a couple in my book and I'm going to show you those, but we've been, it's been really a journey. I've been watching a lot of videos. I really enjoy it. Um, I have always loved art, but I've never been great at fine arts. And I feel like watercolor is a type of fine art, like charcoal drawing or pen and paper, you know, I've just, the fine arts never got me. I was never very great at it. So when I went to art school for college, I took graphic design and got my degree in that, but you only had to take a very small handful of fine art um, classes to get your degree. Watercolor was not in there. Um, we got to, you know, draw naked people. So that was fun. <laughs> that was, all, you know, that's always the class that like you're nervous for and it's really nothing. It's, it's art. So <sighs> yeah, I, but like drawing still objects, I would much rather, I really had a lot more fun in the fine arts class doing like the fine art, like do doing like the free form, really flowy charcoal. I loved, that was, I loved doing that more than anything. Um, I didn't love like having to sit and draw like a vase and an apple, not my thing. <laughs> okay. So back to watercolor. Sorry. I, um, so John had got me, I have a clip on here holding my pages, but I'll take that off. John had got me, John and Hazel had gotten me this book from the Irish festival and it's real leather. It smells great. It's wonderful and it's beautiful. And so I have started in this book because the paper in it is actually like a textured, I don't know if it's cold or hot press, but it's nice and textured and it's great for doing watercolor in my opinion. So this first one, these are not great. No judgment, no judgment zone. This was done with her crayon, her watercolor crayons. And like, you can kind of see where I drew in with the crayon and then just kind of smooshed all the color around with water and a brush. Remember? Well, maybe people won't remember. I don't know when these were around now. I'm 40 and they had these when I was little. They were already like a pre-printed picture, a line, it, and it had like little dots of color in the spots that it was, the color was supposed to be. And you just took a wet brush and you colored it. Do you remember those? I found some for Haze and they weren't as good as I remember mine, but I bet you there's better and worse ones, like quality wise, because she was probably two doing these because, you know, two, you can use water and a paintbrush and I'm not going to get like crazy about cleanup. Uh, she must have been, she might've been also really hard with her paintbrush. She would put holes in the paper. So I bet you if she did them today, but she's not going to want to do those. But if I bought them today, she'd probably be much easier with them just in general. But if you remember those, comment down below. That, I, I thought that was, uh, they were fun. Like, without the ease of having paint, like, that was a great thing for parents. You didn't have to have paint. You just needed water and a paintbrush. And that's why I, like, s found them for Haze when she was little, because the ease of doing something without a massive amount of cleanup. Uh, so yeah, comment down below some of the art things that you remember as a kid and you loved doing that, um, maybe you brought back for your kids or maybe you wish you had them now. Like, 
I love hearing about that stuff. I did a lot of rug hooking in like middle school, you know, like the short pieces of yarn and the hook and the, the canvas. I did a lot of those. Like I probably did like 15 of those at some point. I liked doing those and Hayes got one not too long ago and she had no interest and I think I did it all. It was really tiny. I didn't show that here. Okay, back to this. I'm sorry. I am very like, yeah. So the hardest part about watercolor is patience because there are times you have to let the first layer that you do dry. Now, I was experimenting with two different techniques. The top technique was do doing a puddle of water on your paper and then adding like blobby color to it. And then the bottom, I was trying to do tulips that was from this artist on an Instagram reel. So I wasn't letting it dry. Like the tulips should have had more transparency to see the layer below and you just don't see it. Um, but I, what I could do if I wanted, I could go in and define them a little with like a thin black marker if I really wanted to like define it a little more. I could do that. All right. The next one was another tutorial from another YouTuber and maybe I should point my light. There you go. That was that. My next one is my favorite and it's really just a, a um, why can't I think of words? It is an experiment in color depth, like figuring out the depth of color, depth of shade for a color. And I really enjoyed doing this and I know that might be silly, but I really enjoyed doing this. This is so much fun using just your one color, using less water, using more water, and getting all these different depths of the shade of that color. I, this was fun. Okay. And then the last one I tried this morning was probably way more technical than I should have been. And also I feel like maybe my paintbrushes aren't the greatest. I mean, I did buy nicer sets for Hayes and I, but there are some really expensive and really nice brushes out there, but I'm not going to do that until I feel like I can maybe, I feel like the tools I'm using aren't not good. They're fine for what I'm doing, but if I really get into it, which I don't know if I'm really going to get into it, I would need maybe some better brushes, but this is now my last one I did. It's supposed to be like a field where it's like faded out and hazy in the background and you kind of have like light coming from here and then there's some splattery stuff. There we go. <laughs> That's what I have today. I didn't think I was going to talk for 30 minutes, but here we are. So let me finish this by stating I did read, I finished one book. I'll put it down below. I don't remember the author's name, but it was called The Littlest Library. Really cute uh, adult, some adult stuff in it. Not really a whole lot of adult stuff in it. Um, not like bromance or whatever. M maybe, maybe like a little bit of love interest, but nothing like serious. And that was a good read. It was really quick and I enjoyed it. So that's what matters. I enjoyed it. And the book that I am halfway through now is another this one isn't even really, I don't know what you consider like mm, middle school age, like 10 to 13. I think the girl's like 13 in the book. Um, but I found this book because I just looked up the word Hazel and it's called like Hazel's Theory of Evolution or something like that. But it touches on a lot of topics. It touches on um, the girl having two moms um, death of siblings, uh, transferring schools and your friends. So it touches on a lot of topics that I feel like are really a good spot for that age group that the book is written for. Um, but also for me to read and, you know, Hayes is not quite that age yet, but also is it a terrible thing for me to kind of read this book and have 
um, a perspective of like years to come. No, it's, and, and I can read what I want. <laughs> so I just, I haven't finished it yet, so I don't know how it's going to end, but I, it's about like, you know, friendships and family and, you know, changes in family and things like that. So I don't know. I think, I think it's a good read. And I think any kid that's that age range, it's a good, it's a good book so far. So if you have any littles that are in that age range, I would, I would recommend it. So I'll put that book down below, even though I'm not finished yet. I'm currently reading it. I would still recommend it at this point, even though I'm not done. So, all right. Uh, I have to get some stuff cranked today. I, there is so much noise. The neighbor, they must also be doing some work in their house or something. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. <sighs> okay. I have to, and then Barb from Flame and Fiber is having her Zoom call today. So if you are interested in that, you can go to her page. She has a link on Ravelry and how to get into that Zoom call. So if you would like to join, it's a great group of people and we have some very fun and interesting conversations. So I'll be hopefully joining that today. And until then, I guess just do what you love put away things that maybe you, you thought you were going to love and you don't really love. <laughs> put them away and do something else. And yeah, do what makes your heart happy and makes you feel calm and cool and collective because sometimes we really need that. Yeah. It's it's needed. So again, uh, always check in on your loved ones and yourself and the people you care about. And until the next episode, I can't even get this out without slamming and banging. Peace, love, and happy knitting, y'all. Stay tuned for some BMA pictures and karate.